Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all here. Man, that kind of light load this morning, isn't it? Maybe a lot of folks looking at going to football games or watching football today. Man, it's good to see you all. Um, it is our 15th anniversary month here at Body of Christ Community Church. And so for those of you who are watching our streaming service, thank you for being with us. For those of you in the building, thank you for being with us. And I know it's, it's unusual to see me standing out front first thing. But uh, during the month of January for our anniversary, I generally have uh, the other preachers to preach. And uh, last week, Elder Quentin Nottingham preached. Today, we've got a good preacher coming up. But before we get started, I want to uh, just give a few announcements. You see the first one there. It's about our anniversary month. The next announcement that we have is that for all of our church members and those who have given uh, you can, those who are in Realm, you can go to your Realm account and you can print out your own giving statement. We know that tax season is coming and you want to be able to have a receipt. You can print out your own, own giving statement uh, that way. And then also uh, one of our uh, churches, church where many of us came from, uh, what is it, Calvary Evangelical Baptist Church, they're going to be having their 26th, I believe it is, 26th annual couples retreat. And that's going to be held uh, February 10th through 12th over in Newport News. So uh, February 10th through 12th, a married couples retreat over in Newport News. I went to probably 20 of those straight. I'm thinking about going this year. I got to check with Sheila see if she wants to go. I'm thinking about going this year, because this would be a year I can go, and George, I can do nothing. <laughs> I can just go. I don't have to head it up. I don't have to preach. I don't have to do a workshop. Now, I'm saying all that, and then watch this. Thomas is going to call me. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can call Thomas Reese, and Thomas Reese uh, will give you all of the information regarding what they have planned for this year. And uh, also for the month of January, we are celebrating, as we do on a normal second Sunday, we are celebrating uh, January birthdays. And I believe Horace's was on the 4th. Yesterday's was Adrian Martin's. Um, on tomorrow, it would be Constantina Cook's. And then on Tuesday, the 10th, it will be my birthday. So, Lord, let me live. I'll be 60. 64, thank you, thank you, George. 60. Once you get past 60, you know, uh, things, this gray matter starts to turn a little bit darker gray, so you don't remember as much. But again, uh, those are our announcements. As you notice, we are starting a new format this year as well. We're trying to get all the announcements up front, out of the way, and in so doing, once the praise team comes and the word of God comes at the end of service, then the, hopefully the last thing on your mind will be what the preacher has said. And so uh, I want to start off this morning by reading a passage of scripture. Our theme for this year, our theme for this year is reconnect, trying to get people to come back to church. Uh, Paris was talking about that a little bit this morning with uh, the people who are singing in the praise team. And some people have really gotten comfortable with Bedside Baptist. Pillar Presbyterian, you know, uh, Mattress Methodist. And so uh, trying to get people to come back and, and be reconnected. Can I read for you a passage from the book of Genesis? Genesis chapter 45. I want to start in Genesis 45. And um, let's see, verse 1. You, if you know your Bible, this is a kind of familiar passage. Remember Joseph got sold by his brothers? into slavery, and they had to come to Egypt uh, to get food, and they had to come at least twice, and then the second time, he got his brothers all discombobulated. He, he uh, accused them of stealing, and then he had to reveal himself to them. Here's a reconnection that sometimes we don't think about. When people have done us wrong, how do we reconnect with them? Reconnect to God, yes. Reconnect to the church, yes. But what about that person that did you perhaps the worst that you've ever felt in your life? 
So in Genesis 45, starting at verse 1, when Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all his attendants, so he called out, send everyone away from me. No one uh, was with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers. But he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and also Pharaoh's household heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please come near me. And they came near. I am Joseph, your brother, he said, the one you sold into Egypt. And now don't be worried or angry with yourselves for selling me here because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there will be five more years without plowing or harvesting. God sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant within the land and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. When somebody's done you wrong, can you reconnect with them? Reconnect with them in love, reconnect with them in purpose, reconnect with them knowing that whatever wrong they did to you, God allowed it and he has a purpose for it. We can't focus in on ourselves all the time. Can we focus in on others? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day for the blessing that it is, for the love that you have given us. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be in your house again, to worship you. Lord, we came to hear from you, but we also want you to hear from us our worship, our praise, to give you the thanks for all that you have done for us and all that you're doing. Lord, there are many things that have transpired just from last Sunday to this Sunday. God, there are people who have had illnesses. Lord, we think about Damar Hamlin, the football player who died on the field. And yet, Lord, by your grace, you brought him back. I pray, Lord, that that testimony of the millions of people who were praying would go out and people won't think it's just love. It's because of who you are in your grace and how you answer the prayers of your people. Lord, some of us have had to deal with loss in our lives. Some of us have had to deal also, Lord, with not just the physical loss, but some financial loss. I pray, God, that on today we would focus in on you and those things that have caused us angst. We will forget about those and we will reconnect with you. Your preacher that's coming today, bless him, strengthen him. Let the words of his mouth and the meditations of his heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, but also, Lord, let it be health to our ears and to our soul. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> to the mercy seat.
that earth has no sorrow? Earth has no sorrow. That heaven, that heaven cannot heal. Earth has no sorrow. cannot heal that heaven cannot heal that heaven that heaven cannot heal yeah Savior with 
whispers his promise never to leave me alone no never alone no never alone he promised never to leave me never to leave me I need you to put your hands together this morning. The song says, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? And that's a terrible thought. Come on, if it had. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me. Where would I be? 
if it had, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? He kept, he kept mine in a bees away. time hold to his hand hold to his hand God's unchanging hand hold to his hand God's unchanging hand build your hopes on things he I am. I am bound for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. I'm bound for Mount Zion, way out on a hill. I'm bound for Mount Zion. I'm bound for Mount Zion. I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out on a hill. I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out on a hill. I'm bound for Mount Zion. Way out. 
Well, I guess I need to take this off so y'all can hear me. Um, it is, as I said, our 15th anniversary. And as the children, I guess 12 and below, go to Junior's Church, uh, it is my privilege and my honor to introduce our speaker for this morning. He has been uh, with us from the very beginning. Um, very interesting man uh, in that he's highly educated. Um, he served in the United States Navy as a chaplain. He was stationed here. One of his last duty stations, if not the last duty station, was the Naval Hospital here in Portsmouth, Virginia. Uh, it was because of that duty station that I met him. And he is also a college professor. He was my church history professor at Angelos Bible College. And I counted a privilege and an honor to serve with him and to serve as his pastor. Uh, he's a great man, a husband, a father, a grandfather. Uh, he does not like a whole lot of attention because of all of his um, ec uh, educational acumen and uh, his status in life. He just wants to be known as JT. He said, you don't have to call me chaplain. You don't have to call me elder, but uh, just call me JT. Great man, wonderful friend, uh, great preacher. Um, at growing up, my sons uh, emulated him quite often because JT has this, this tendency to when he's talking, he go, and or um, and you may hear that. <laughs> you may hear that as he comes and he brings God's word to us. And so it's my honor to introduce to you and to present to others Elder uh, Julius Thomas Sr., that picture that you see is uh, from about 15 years ago when we were meeting in John Yates Middle School. Ooh. And so uh, that was him preaching on that morning. Uh, looks like it was the 6th of July, uh, uh, 2008. I'm sorry, I, don't, I didn't have any other pictures of JT uh, preaching. But this is a man of God. He will have you thinking very deeply. And so, JT, if you would, sir, come, and would you uh, bring to us the word of God on this morning, Elder Julius Thomas, Sr. Thank you, my brother. You're welcome. And the room is good to see you this morning. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, good morning again. Uh, this past week, uh, my wife and I celebrated our 43rd anniversary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, at the beach, in Virginia Beach, and we had Virginia Beach all to ourselves. <laughs> it, it's the all season. And nobody wants to come to Virginia Beach on the off season. Uh, and uh, it was a blessing to be able to uh, take time out and, uh, and talk to each other, uh, listen to each other, uh, and re rekindle uh, what God has given us. I uh, <clears throat> want to talk about, as I see Jesus, reconnecting, uh, reconnecting to Jesus. Um, Another word for reconnecting is uh, you plug in. You, you, you understand that one, huh? You folk of the 21st century. See, all, all you do is just plug in. 
and everything uh, gives you whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. You just plug in. Uh, and <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping that uh, as I share with you, as I understand Jesus, that uh, uh, we can be of the of similar mind, the same mind. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this privilege, this blessing, how good and pleasant it is to be here and to proclaim your divine word, your eternal word. Give us uh, your continued vision uh, this month and the year as we seek to be like you in all that we do. Hear our prayers and incline your ear to us and grant us your peace, mercy, and love. Amen. We turn with me, uh, Matthew 12. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Matthew, the 12th chapter, 1 through uh, 14. Uh, uh, well, you didn't get that, did you? Did you? <clears throat> I'm reading from the uh, New King James Version. <clears throat> Jesus uh, <clears throat> went through the cornfields, the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But Jesus said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him but only for the priest. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man who had withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath that they might accuse him? Then he said to them, what man is there among you who has one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more than, uh, how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him how they might, what, destroy him. As I see Jesus. Now, <clears throat> there are three interpretations of Jesus. Your interpretation of Jesus my interpretation of Jesus, and Jesus as he is. Now, which one do you think I'm going to talk about? Uh, the one who is in the record. Jesus, as he is. Hmm? Uh, so, how is Jesus as he is? He is Jesus. 
How, how are you as you are? You're George. That's who, you, that's your name. Though the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Paris. Uh, I grew up on, as you will know, uh, like you, anthems, and hymns, and just only here at the body of Christ will you hear the the the, the, the songs of old. So I want to share with you when I again. My sermon is, as I see Jesus. Now, uh, you may not see Jesus the way I see him. But I, uh, I want to say what Jesus is not. Uh, Jesus is not a Christian. Can I say that again? Jesus is not a Christian. Christian is only a label. And, and you know what labels do for us? It allows us to get behind and hide. And hide. I, I, as we, as we celebrate reconnecting uh, we, we are going to look at Jesus as he is to reconnect labels allow us to hide behind the truth behind the facts well and so Christianity uh, 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 allows us to express what we what we like Jesus to be. Jesus is Jesus. He is not what we think he is. That's who he, that's who he is. Jesus, and no one else. And I, I will connect the passage that I just read later on. But uh, Christianity dilutes the message of Jesus. I know you don't believe that. Dilutes the message of Jesus. Uh, I'm an avid reader. Um, and uh, uh, there, there's, a, there's an article in the newspaper few, uh, last year. And it really, it, it, it's an indictment about the, the church. Can politics save Christianity? It isn't, it, isn't that a mess? Is that the same as, uh, well, if you uh, uh, change it, can politics save Jesus? Since we equate Jesus and Christianity, the same. Uh, uh, are we, are we uh, connecting here? Huh? That, 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 that's an indictment on the church. And what he said in the article there, that... Uh, 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 what he meant by that was that uh, folk talk about uh, being a liberal Christian or a conservative Christian. Well, can, if you agree with me that Jesus is not a Christian, can you imagine folks saying, well, I'm a conservative Jesus lover. I'm a liberal Jesus lover. Well, what does that mean? As I see, again, as I see Jesus, am I clear? 
And, and if not, we can debate this later on when a rabbi has his Bible study. <laughs> It, it, it's an, it, it, it is an appropriate question. Can uh, uh, politics save Christianity? Perhaps you notice uh, that uh, uh, I put Jesus in the present tense. Have you noticed that? Huh? You know why? Because anyone who is resurrected is not in the past tense. Uh, um, um, does that make sense? He, he, he is always here. He's not in the past tense. He, he, he is here. Uh, and and, and uh, the, the, the hymnologists and uh, the songwriters understand uh, understand that he promised never to leave me. What alone? Oh, there are a lot of folk out here are alone. They feel alone. So you know. So after after this uh, this message, please don't call me a Christian. You 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 will insult me. Now, if you call me a Jesus lover, then, 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 then that's fine. I, I, I think we need to really understand this. Am I making sense? I don't know one is saying amen. That's okay. Not what Jesus was, but what Jesus is. What we call in the Greek the parousia. He, 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 he is here. Right now. Right now. Now, you may ask, how does this long introduction uh, relate to our text? Now, I'm, I'm going to get to it. Um, the past few years, our nation has been talking about what is lawful. The rule of law. What is lawful? Did, did, did you hear the Pharisees uh, ask Jesus, what, 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 what's lawful? Hmm? We, 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 we've been talking about uh, the rule of law in our nation. The rule of law. No one is above the law. Well, the... the we know better than that, don't we? Huh? No, I'm not going to get fairly in them. But the, uh, the rule of law, what we call democracy, and all that our uh, democracy is all about. The rule of law. But Jesus is talking about a different kind of law. Is it? What kind of law is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about the needs of human beings. The needs of human beings. That is the law. The first uh, law of Jesus that if people are hungry, you feed them. Isn't that simple? Mm -hmm. and there's nothing complex about it. I, I, uh, over the years, that's, that's what we've been doing here at the body of Christ. I, I can tell you the, uh, the, the number of checks that we, we've written over the years. Because folk were hungry. They were hungry. But, we, but you know what Christianity does, uh, what our brain says, why, why doesn't this person have a job? Right? 
You, you need to get a job. Uh, and uh, um, you need to get a job. Our economy is not designed for everybody to have a job. Did, did you know that? I, I heard the, 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 uh, the, the woman who was over the reserve of, over the reserve of, of, of our treasury. She says she, 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 they, she's going to increase the interest rate because there are too many people who have jobs. Inflation, all that foolishness. Okay, I'm not, I, I don't want to. There's this uh, psychologist by the name of Maslow who talks about the hierarchy of needs. Mm. Uh, the, the, the need to, uh, <clears throat> to feel secure, uh, the physical safety, and then so after we feel secure, then we are ready to uh, have love. And after we have love and you feed us, then there is fulfillment. Well, Jesus talks about the same thing. Well, 2,000 years ago, you just simply love them. And the way you love them is that you feed them if they're hungry. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is what uh, uh, we need to reconnect with. No, no, this is as I see Jesus. Okay. Now we can debate that with, with, as, as you see it. Christians categorize needs. Jesus doesn't. Jesus doesn't. We, we, we need to be uh, uh, clear about this and stop playing these games. No, not you. Not you. But the church. The church. Now, uh, what Jesus did, uh, let, let's go back to the text, uh, the 12th chapter of, uh, uh, excuse me, of uh, Matthew and my, uh, uh, everything is coming apart. Uh, not, not Jesus. But 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 me, and so when I uh, come apart, uh, am I still on? Yeah. Uh, let's go back to uh, Matthew the twelfth chapter. Uh, <clears throat> Are we there yet? I'm not. <laughs> Uh, the first chapter, the first verse, at the time Jesus went through the crane, crane fields of the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of, of grain and to eat. So the first thing we see here is that Jesus uh, takes care of his own. Yes, sir. Hmm? That, that, that's the first thing. You, 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 you. Uh, he, he was taking care of his friends. These folk were hungry. He didn't care about the institution, about the priest. They were hungry. Either. Yes. Who, uh, we who have uh, professed to take care of, of our community, those of us who are part of this fellowship, we need to take care of each other. Amen. And we do that so wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And I'll explain that later on. What are you doing for me? My, 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 my family in Kentucky doesn't call me. There's a whole tribe of them. 
<coughs> they, don't, they don't call me? How are you doing? You do. You know why? Because you profess to know better. Hmm? Okay. Jesus uh, 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 quotes scripture here as he entered the house of uh, how David entered the house of God and fed his friends. Fed his friends. And, and Paul reminds us, uh, uh, go, go to uh, Rome, uh, Romans 3.27. Uh, <clears throat> Romans three twenty seven. Paul talks about boasting. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works? No, but by the law of faith. If we believe in Jesus, then we believe in the law of faith. Amen. That's who we are. We are people of faith, not by sight. And, we, and, and, we, and because Jesus is present, we, we, we can trust that. Okay? We can trust that. Or uh, I guess for the, for, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, after you feed them, you do what? You heal them. You heal them. That is our responsibility. Amen. That's what we're all about. Uh, look at verse 10 in, in Matthew 12. I mean, uh, uh, in Romans, uh, uh, no, I think it's uh, Matthew 10. <clears throat> Verse 10. Um, uh, the 10th verse. And behold, there was a man who had a withered hand. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Uh, they, you know, that, that's what a Christian would say. Mm. Are, you, are, are you listening to these folk who, who claim themselves to be Christians? Is it lawful? Mm. The politics of hunger. Mm. We, 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 we feed them. Uh, Steph, uh, uh, I preached a, a sermon on uh, uh, one Psalm 107. Let's uh, let's let's go. Uh, last year, and uh, there, uh, and out of that, uh, crafted uh, gave me my my favorite verse, Psalm 107, uh, verse 20. <clears throat> Here it is. It says, what? Uh, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. God is sending, sends his word. And, 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 and uh, his word is what? Present. Can, can you feel it? Hmm. He sends his word. And people are healed and eventually they are restored from their withered life. And, and, and so that, that, that's a lot of work, isn't it? That's a lot of work. It requires a lot of patience. And he restored them. 
And this is what we do. That, that Paul reminds us when we feed folk, we become the people of faith. Say that again. When we do what Jesus does, we become people of faith. And it's at that, at that point that the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. All Jesus wants to do is to get us out of the pit of life. That's all he wants to do. But you know, when I try to climb out of the pit, you folk pull me down. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not you. Not you. <clears throat> hmm? on, on, on your job? It, 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 it's very competitive. <clears throat> In the military, uh, 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 if, I, I, if I get a negative or a, or a fitness report stuff, it's over for me as an officer in the Navy. So people play games. We play games. It's a serious game, but we play games. We are the people of faith. And so all Jesus wants to do is to get us out of the pit. Irma Bombach years ago wrote a book. Uh, she said, if life is a bowl of cherries, why am I in the pit? <clears throat> uh, you, you know what being in the pit is all about, don't you? The emotional pits. We, we, we just ex experienced that a month or so ago. Uh, uh, you, you see, uh, Matthew 12 is the nitty-gritty nitty of the gospel. Down in the pit. You, you, see, you see that uh, television program, this guy uh, do, uh, uh, does dirty jobs, mm -hmm. smelly jobs. <clears throat> Getting in the pit with folks smells. Ma Maxine sat down one time, she said, I'm so tired of smelling pee. I've been smelling pee for 10 years. For 10 years. Now, if you, if you want to help, come by and help us smell. You can smell some pee with us. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. But you know, uh, getting getting old. You know what old getting old does for you? It, it, it brings out the Shakespeare in you. To pee or not to pee? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. <clears throat> uh, uh, well, well, those of you who are not my age, you you learn. What did our, 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 our forefathers tell us? You, you learn. <clears throat> but it's real. It is real. And, and so a, a, few, a month or so ago, uh, uh, Cheryl Nottingham, she's not here. I told her to be here. Uh, 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 she, she sent us a, a, a text message. Well, you, and, and you could sense her urgency and her frustration. Is there anything we can do? And so Maxine and I looked at each other and talked about it. Uh, uh, we felt guilty because we couldn't think of anything she could do. Mm. We couldn't think of anything she could do. But eventually we, we, we thought of something. Well, we, 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 are, uh, we, we said, well, we got some electronic things here uh, and some monitoring, monitoring uh, devices. 
And, uh, but she, she realized she couldn't do it. And the next thing I heard was the pastor called. Well, JT, I, I hear you got some uh, devices, monitoring devices. Uh, I'll, I'll come over. And uh, there was a Sunday he was preaching. He was not feeling good. And so Maxine uh, said, oh, no. Uh, uh, the pastor and Sheila normally goes out uh, on Sundays to eat. So we might be interrupting that. That is the nature of being in the pit. The emotional pit. You, 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 you are paralyzed. You don't know what to do. So the pastor came by, hooked us up with the monitoring devices over at Leroy's house. He has vascular dementia. Uh, and so we can uh, uh, monitor uh, 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 from our house to his house. And then we can get some quality sleep. All Jesus wants to do is what? Get us out of the pit. Not, not because uh, uh, this person in the pit uh, uh, is a Christian. He's human. He's human. That's the nature of being in the pit uh, oftentimes. You feel guilty. But God sends his people, those of us who are part of uh, his promise to never leave us. There's another song that I grew up with, an anthem, I serve a risen savior. He's in the world today. Yes, sir. No, he's present. Whatever men may say. I serve him. You know why we serve him? Because he's present. He's not in the past. That's how I see Jesus. I don't know how you see him. I serve him as a savior. He's in the world today. Are you in the pit? I know you, if, if not, you've been there. You've been there. But thank you, thank, thanks to God that uh, uh, we are the people of faith. And as people of faith, we uh, provide flesh. The, the, uh, making the world the word flesh yes. and, it, and it's in us it's in us this is perhaps the, the nittiest grittiest sermon you've ever heard but, but it, it is not me it is the nitty gritty of the gospel I'm so glad to be able to preach it because it's been eating at me so long. I'm so, 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 so glad. <laughs> Those of you who preach know I understand. Let's pray. God, we give you the glory, the honor. Oh, we know you're with us because. You, we, 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 you are here. You stood up from the grave and proclaimed all victory. And because of it, we feel your victory. We feel your presence. We feel the promise of who you are. Bless and keep us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Bless you, JT, for the nitty gritty of the gospel. Um, unless you've been a caregiver, you may not understand what it is to be in the pit with somebody. As I look 
throughout this congregation this morning, many of you have been caregivers. Some of you are still caregivers and you are still dealing with the down and the dirty of the gospel when you've got to change someone's diaper. I'm not talking about a baby. When you've got to extend yourself beyond your physical capabilities, how do you see Jesus? Uh, do you see the Jesus who gave himself for those of us <laughs> who didn't deserve his sacrifice? That's the Jesus that we should be reconnecting to. And I believe that's what JT was telling us on this morning. He gave himself for us. Therefore, we should extend ourselves for others if we're going to call ourselves, would you say, JT, not Christians, but Jesus lovers, followers of Jesus. We follow his example. How far did he go? You ever thought about that? How far did he go? He went so far as to go to the cross. Innocent died for us that we might have life everlasting. Thank you. Thank you, JT, for that reminder. Uh, before we go today, Paris, were you going to sing something? I saw you pulled a hymn book up. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, if you, I tell you what, why don't you just, just go on and sing a little bit of it. You, don't, you just, they can come on back up and help you. Uh, for those of you who are visiting with us, this, this is us. We don't have a whole lot of form or fashion when it comes to church. We, we are people. We are human who follow, humans who follow Jesus Christ. But he does, I mean, either I'm going to sing it or you're going to sing it. <laughs> So I guess Paris is going to sing it because they don't, they, don't, they don't allow me to sing around here. They, they, they don't want to uh, uh, run y'all out of here. And while he's getting, I give him a moment to get himself together. While he's doing that um, to close us out, then um, one of the other things that we generally do here at Body of Christ is if you have any prayer requests, uh, if you find yourself in the pit, as JT said, if you're going through something, or you know someone else that's going through something and you want us to pray um, for you and with you, just very briefly tell us what the prayer request is and uh, we will pray. Anyone with a prayer request? Yes, Mildred. Um, pray for the Davis family. Okay. Uh, my brother lost his son. Oh, wow. And my brother is in a nursing home. Okay, we so will pray. Just we will pray. We will pray. Anyone else before we go? Oh, and pray for the Bolton family. Okay. All right. Put we, um, we will continue to pray for Kenny and Ruby. Um, spoke with her, well, texted with her this week. He's home from the hospital. And so um, he's still uh, here with us, praise the Lord, but um, his heart is still uh, declining. So let's just pray. Uh, she's in that, what you call it, JT? In the pit. Mm -hmm. She's in the pit. Every time I ask her, what can we do? She, and I ask her specifically something tangible. Because mm -hmm. I know what she's going to say. She's going to say, pray. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. But what's practical? What is hands-on? What, yeah. what is going through the grain fields and pulling heads of corn and, and defending someone? What is healing someone who needs that emotional uplift? Uh, what can we do? You know, that's part of who we are. Uh, what our mission statement for Body of Christ is, that we would heal the broken hearted. That's what we founded this, this church on, to be able to heal the broken hearted, to be in a position to do that. So y'all ready? I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today.
Father God in heaven, we are so glad that you have given to us this privilege to be called the sons of God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, your son, our savior, our redeemer. Thank you that he lives and that he lives within our hearts. I pray that we would hear his voice when he speaks to us and tells us to go and to feed the hungry, to heal the brokenhearted, to sit with the downtrodden, to come and be a hand for those and assistance for those who need assistance. I pray that we won't look through, as JT reminded us this morning, the eyes of a Christian, but look through the eyes of our Savior upon those who have real needs and we would step in and without judgment fulfill those needs. Lord God, we need to leave judgment to you. As we leave this place today, we pray that our hearts would be in tune with yours, that we would, as uh, JT reminded us, to be plugged in, to be reconnected with the real Jesus of the Bible Mm. and not the Jesus of our own thinking. Mm. Keep us safe. Give us the strength to do what you call us to do, to love one another, and then to tell the testimony of Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, to compel men to come to know him in a very real way. This we ask in his name and for his sake. Let all of God's people say, amen, amen. Amen. Be blessed, saints. Enjoy the Lord this week and go out and be a Jesus lover. Amen.